I think that herbal medicine can not just transform your options for treatment, particularly for chronic disease, but can also um, go a long way towards giving us a different perspective on thinking about health and disease. And that can be really, really useful. I, I don't think I could personally practice now without um, my herbs as as medicines. Um, I still use conventional medicine. I still am a veterinarian, but uh, every day I can use herbs for things that we just don't have drugs for, um, which is uh, super exciting. And, uh, you know, I've just been treating just this week, for example, um, I have been looking at a patient who is on very high doses of prednisolone for a glioma. Um, this patient has had uh, doses of radiation therapy. Um, the tumour is in remission but is still there and the dog is actually suffering quite extreme side effects from the prednisolone. So I'm working with the owner um, and the specialist to sort of see if we can get the prednisolone doses down and still actually keep this uh, uh, tumour um, in check. And, and that's the sort of thing that we've got opportunities to do with, with herbs. And uh, you'd be surprised to know just how many herbs have been researched uh, for the treatment of glioma in humans. Um, lots of in vitro studies, uh, mainly in vitro, um, but uh, certainly there's some benefits in terms of inducing apoptosis um, in glioma cell lines, for example. So let's get started with Western herbal medicine uh, with an emphasis on veterinary herbal medicine. So I'm just going to start off uh, with a patient that I saw a little while ago, um, February 2011. Um, He's actually a uh, Rex, and I didn't get to see him that many times. Um, he came in because he suffered from urticaria pigmentosa, and at the time I'd never even seen a case in, you know, almost uh, 25 years of practice. And uh, so I had to go and look it up and find out what it's about, and it's obviously one of these eosinophilic conditions um, of cats that occurs mainly in sphinxes, siameses, and also rexes. And I used my mobile phone to take a picture of this cat, cat so his eyes look a bit demonic. But uh, you can see on his abdomen that he's really alopecic and he has these um, sort of red lesions all over his skin and there's a close-up there um, of his skin. And uh, so this is really eosinophilic uh, inflammation and he's very pot-bellied because his treatment um, was primarily um, steroid injections each month by his regular vet and had been on them for quite some time. He was a, a, a cranky cat. Um, I, I didn't much enjoy handling him. His owner had to do most of that. Um, he was also treated with topical hydrocortisone, which may have some bearing on the alopecia on his tummy, but certainly had an enlarged liver. He was um, cranky. Um, he was heading towards um, diabetes. The local veterinarian had put him on to the hypoallergenic diet ZD, um, Hill ZD. So... Uh, you know, the owner came sort of saying, well, is there anything else we can do to help my cat? You know, he's been on all this medication and he's not really responding all that well. This is what he's like. You know, I took it off the ZD diet. I'd been on it for ages and nothing much was happening. This cat, cat was caught in a chronic disease state and nothing was shifting it and not, not even relieving it. In fact, making the, the cat worse, being pre-diabetic and, you know, heading towards um, a disaster. I did put it onto a homemade diet, as I do nearly all my patients that are on highly processed um, carbohydrate-based diets. It also makes giving herbs much, much easier. We can just mix them in with food generally. I actually treated this little pussycat with some Chinese herbs and it's probably not that important that I tell you what I use because you'll understand in a short while why. The other thing I did was give her a bag of calendula flowers from our refrigerator and told her how to use it and apply it topically instead of the, um, the hydrocortisone. <laughs> 